been fascinating, a really a wonderful afternoon. I'm a friend of Henry's. We're in a poetry group together. Uh, I'm a poet and a fabric artist, a graphic designer, and a yoga teacher, which has a lot of images in. I, I, I'm not technically savvy to put my painting up, not my painting, but the, the painting that inspired this poem. It's from 1622. It's by Guercino, and it's of Mary Magdalene um, at the tomb. It's, it, I think his um, painting is called Magdalene and Two Angels. Uh, my poem's called Mary Magdalene's Arms. When Jesus walked the countryside, writes Luke, he gathered 12 apostles, plus a few women he'd cured of evil spirits, including Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. On a bad day, my seven carry the same name, wooden shoe, from the French sabot, root of sabotage. Other days, I distinguish them. I learned this from Malcolm. Otis is the pain that burns my stomach, he says. Carl is the pain when I turn my neck. In the squinter Guercino's painting of 1622, Mary Magdalene sits in sorrow at Christ's tomb. Her brown hair billows down. She has muscles. Her arms are strong. She could roll away that massive slab of stone. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. So um, a friend of mine who is doing some relief work in Africa brought this back to me from, um, it was done by somebody in a, in a refugee camp in a very harsh area of Africa. And so I loved it. And I, you know, it seemed to me like, wow. So even in this really harsh landscape, this gathering of zebras found a place where there's some grass to eat and a little bit of leaf, leafy shade to stand under. And then, and I, and I, that's the way I always looked at it for years. And then one day I was looking at it and it occurred to me that I'd been looking at it incorrectly, that this was actually a picture of zebras that wherever they are, whatever, whatever piece of parched earth that they are grazing on, it is a lush piece of grass. And that whatever bare tree they're standing underneath, whatever dead leaf is on it is a broad shade against the harsh sun. So it's a matter of perspective. So I thought, wow, I need to write a poem about that. Of course, you know, here in Virginia, we don't have a lot of zebras, but we do have horses. And this is horse country. So I wrote this about horses, but with respect to the same concept and, and imagery of that of that artwork. And the poem is from my, my collection, We Stay, A Brief Telling. And the poem is called As Horses. Like petals pressed between pages past, rain falls to memory August dry. Yet horses graze the dry cracked earth, knowing each hoof step finds verdant growth, each dip in ochre dust, rich grass, each naked tree a broad leaf cast against searing sun. And when dry cracked earth crumbles beneath and bare trees snap brittle into breaking void, taking hearth and hope and heaven's slipping hold as cracked bells clatter in hollow night, take hold the wind as horses will with eyes a spark, gallop glad across the grim of gathering dark. Thank you so much, Steve. I love the way that you transposed the, the zebras into something that you were more familiar with, with the horses. Um, yeah, it was it was very fun. It was it was one of those moments when I just saw the painting or the artwork from a whole different perspective. And I, and I was like, wow, I need to write about this. Yeah, it's great.